Welcome to the Powerline Podcast, the official podcast of Greystone Power. I'm your host, Adam Elrod. This month, we're speaking with President and CEO Gary Miller about why Greystone members will not experience the blackouts that other parts of the country are bracing for and the work that makes this reliability possible. So let's jump right on in to episode number 23 of the Powerline Podcast. You may have heard that some parts of the country are expecting to deal with blackouts during the summer months. Here at Greystone, we have plans to keep that from happening. To discuss that, we are talking with President and CEO Gary Miller. Gary, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Adam. It's good to be back with you again. I think you now actually have the record. This uh, is number three, so members, definitely go check back with the other uh episodes that we've done with Gary to learn more about him, his role, and he has a wide breadth of knowledge. And so we really wanted to bring him in for this discussion. And you've seen many changes in the industry over the years. Have you ever seen a situation where many utilities may not be able to meet their consumers' electricity needs? Honestly, Adam, I've not seen it at the level and the scale that we're hearing about today. Certainly, these have been issues that we've heard about over the years on the West Coast. Uh, Texas, winter before last, had a major uh, incident uh, during during the winter time, but not to the level that we're hearing today across the country. And these types of incidents, like you said, West Coast, it's been going on for a few years. But it seems like the reports are definitely going to be more widespread this year. Really, the East Coast seems like the only area not expecting something like that. What causes these types of situations to occur? Well, and and I'll tell you, you know, the bottom line is extreme temperatures, whether it's very, very hot or very cold, uh, will drive a high demand for electricity. And when you have situations where you don't have enough generating capacity and reserves to meet that load, then you're going to run into this situation. Now, that can happen for a a couple of reasons. Um, It may be that one of the main generating units of a power plant has an operational problem and it has to be taken offline for repair, and you lose valuable generation at a time when you really needed it. But, you know, it also can be due to, and I think in a lot of ways are, some of our climate uh, change policies that we have and the the move to uh, restrict fossil fuels. We've seen a lot of coal plants being retired and taken taken off, and and a lot of times that energy is being replaced with renewables, whether it be solar or wind. And, uh, you know, a coal plant's a, a considered a baseload unit, generates power 24-7, 365. But solar and wind as renewables will only generate during the times of either the sun or the wind blowing. We don't have that battery technology storage uh, system in place at this point. And so we're displacing some very reliable generation, uh, and we're not really, with the climate policies, uh, replacing all of that. At Greystone, we've never experienced anything like this. What have we done at the co-op level to insulate ourselves from these situations and continue to provide reliable power? That's a great question, Adam. And I'll tell you, one of the things that we do in our power contracts uh, have a requirement that the uh, supplier meet our needs uh, for demand for power, no matter what it is. So it's the responsibility in a lot of ways is on them to go out if there's a problem and buy more power on the market. Now, that said, uh, we also make sure that the power uh, generating plants that we own parts of have adequate uh, reserves in place. Today, we run about 12.6% reserves uh, in case uh, we have extreme temperatures. Uh, We want to be able to to meet those needs. We generally forecast every year what we think our summer peak is going to be, how much energy and capacity we need to meet that. And then we have a 12.6% reserve on top of that to be uh, to be able to deal with it. And then, you know, we offer uh, to um, a lot of our commercial accounts that are able 
to uh, reduce their load during peak times, uh, a load management rate. So we give them an incentive. If they can come offline during a very peak period of time and that works with their operation, then there's incentives there for them uh, as well. That's our local version of it with the co-op. Is there anything at the statewide level that has been done to help with these issues as well? Well, you know, the Public Service Commission and the legislature, I've got to give both of them uh, some high uh, high marks. Uh, you know, currently Georgia does not have a renewable mandate that is pushing us to meet certain targets. So they're letting us keep uh in, in transition, and we've done a lot in solar, but transition a little slower without mandates. They are forcing things to happen faster than technology or faster than we can. That is helping to ensure the reliability of having these plants online to meet these needs, particularly in, in this kind of weather. Um, you know, we have uh, a well balanced portfolio of generation. We have renewables, we have nuclear, we have coal, we have hydro, uh, natural gas. So, a very balanced portfolio, I think, that, that also helps uh, in, in these types of situations. You want the ability to have all generating resources available. That sounds like a great plan. Always plan for the future and ways to make sure that we're not heavily reliant on one energy source versus another. To be this reliable takes a lot of planning. What is Greystone's reliability rating? That's a great question, Adam. We have reliability to our members 99.98% of the time. Um, I can tell you, we've, as you said earlier, we've never had a situation where we've had to do blackouts and brownouts due to inadequate uh, amount of, of power. Our, uh, if we have uh, outages, and I remember experience outages, they're going to be weather-related uh, most of the time, or uh, trees in particular. Probably 85% of our outages are a result of trees falling. So then there's car accidents and animals and other things that might be around that. But we plan and have built uh, a system to be highly reliable. We trim the right of way. We uh, do proactive uh, maintenance on our equipment, uh, infrared um, images of our substations to make sure we don't have any equipment about to falter. So a lot of work uh, goes into uh, to making uh, our power as reliable as, we, as it can be. That is great information for our members when they really think about it, especially with the right-of-way clearing that we do. Uh, I know that our number one cause of outages is trees and limbs outside of our right-of-way. So, members, you can rest assured that we do everything to keep that reliability rating as high as possible. Many other outages in other parts of the country are during peak demand, and you touched on that a little bit. Um, and for our members' knowledge, that means a time of day when a lot of people are using electricity at once. With temperatures already nearing and some days have hit the triple digits, though we won't see any blackouts, are there ways members can help reduce supply needed in these peak times? Oh, a absolutely. Conserving electricity during high temperature periods uh, and, and high demand can be helpful as long as it, it doesn't cause a spike in energy at the end of the conservation period. But turning up the air conditioner a few degrees during the daytime hours, that's an effective way to conserve electricity, and it doesn't really compromise comfort in the home. When, if you think about it's 98 degrees outside, you raise your air conditioner to 78 degrees, you're going to reduce your energy, you're gonna save money on your bill, and really coming in from 98 degrees into a 78 degree house is gonna feel very comfortable. Um, I would also say, you know, doing some household chores like washing clothes, drying clothes, running the dishwasher, push those into the later evening hours. Uh, that will help as well. And, you know, if you do have uh, an electric vehicle, charging those at night, overnight, not plugging those up during the daytime would also uh, be a big help. But it's, it's all about reducing consumption during those peak periods of time. And if you'd like to help get some tools to help you with that, Members, we can always tell you, go to GreystonePowerMarketplace.com. You can get smart thermostats and a ton of different products that can help reduce that during those peak hours. 
So, Gary, you're no stranger to the podcast. You know the last question's always the same. Is there anything else you'd like to tell our members? Well, what I would say to them is is uh, we do not believe in our modeling and our um, preparing for this summer that we're going to have any issues with blackouts or brownouts. Now, you know, you can always have a mechanical problem at a generating plant, you know, that causes something unexpected. But our planning, our reserves, and our forecasting, we feel that everything uh, will be fine um, this summer. Uh, but I would say it's going to be hot. It's going to be hotter than normal. It's going to be uh, dry for the most part, and that'll add to it with the humidity. So uh, I would say stay as comfortable as you can. Stay hydrated. It's very important, uh, you know, with that. Uh, and uh, and just remind folks that they can do their part during these peak times to help with the demand and uh, at the same time save money just by, by conserving. Well, I can't thank you enough for your time and being part of the podcast today. Well, thank you. It was great to be here. I always enjoy uh, speaking with you. Well, that is all the time we have today. Thank you so much for joining us for episode number 23 of the Powerline podcast. Make sure you hit subscribe and also go ahead and rate us five stars. We'd greatly appreciate it. This has been the Powerline podcast. Thanks for listening.